I think I am very passionate about people knowing their worth, whatever that looks like, and being able to affirm them. I really enjoy photography. Um, it's I've never taken an official class or anything, but I have worked at a camp for two summers and I will this summer as well as a camp photographer. If someone has a really good photo of themselves, it changes their perspective on how they view themselves. And I think that's incredible. And I love being able to have the power to do that. I have five siblings. I have three older siblings, a brother, two sisters, and then a younger sister and a younger brother and a foster brother for the past three years. When I was born, I was diagnosed with a rare form of dwarfism called diastrophic dysplasia, and it affects approximately one in 500,000 people in the US. It affects my ability to stand, walk, run. Just everyday life is significantly impacted by this. In a way, I'm a little bit like a walking billboard because everybody is going to look wherever I go. So why not use that to make people hear about the things that I care about? And so I started wearing t-shirts with controversial things on them that I believed in. I figured if I'm going to be given something very different, then why not use that difference for something a little extra? So the concept of being a fighter was always something that was like, ah, oh, yes. Like, fighting, yes, that's exactly who I am. That's what I want to do. Um, in any sense of the word, is I liked fighting for people and for things and for myself. Fighting for something that is more than what pornography is. And obviously, like, that is the core message of Fight the New Drug, is fight for love. Love is far more than pornography could ever be. Jeremy and I became friends uh, a year or two ago. And uh, since I've always been very upfront about talking about pornography, and Jeremy is someone who wears his heart on his sleeve, and if he cares about something, you know that he cares about it, and he will always be very honest. So I knew pretty quickly that uh, because I was open about it, then he became very open about it, and we knew that each other was very passionate about talking about pornography. We just had this conversation, and we're like, we need to get this 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 problem of pornography out on campus. She just came up with the idea that we should make flyers and we should just put post them around campus. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. And so I created a flyer with information that I have learned over the years, some through Fight the New Drug, some from other sources. The top this is presented by Annie Kaplicek and Jeremy Davis because we felt that it was really important for people to know that this was a student-led movement and not a campus-led movement. And we also felt that it was less intimidating to be like, yeah, we're just like you, but this is something we really care about. In some of the dorms, our posters were torn down very quickly. In other dorms, the posters stayed up, no problem. So I would say we definitely had a lot of support and a lot of encouragement for what we were doing though it wasn't all positive, we anticipated that and honestly expected a much worse response than what we got, uh, which was really encouraging. I think that being fighter of the year is not going to change how I approach fighting pornography. That was never my goal when I started being involved in this organization and so it gives me more motivation, I could say, or more resources or the feel that I am doing something right. At the end of the day, I would never change who I am. We are so often uncomfortable with the idea of being made uncomfortable because we won't have the right thing to say that we allow someone else to sit in their own discomfort and expect them to stay there. And that is not a fair expectation if we expect people to be able to heal. I've had so many people in my life who don't want to hear what I have to say, and that's okay. They don't have to. They're under no obligation to listen to what I have to say. But I think you have to decide, are you only saying things for people to listen, or do you care so much about what you're talking about that you're going to talk about it no matter if they're listening or not? And if you're only saying it for them to listen, then you may not genuinely care as much as you thought you did.